Uh, hello and welcome everybody. This will be my third weekly mailbag and the first question that I received that I thought was very good is this. What do you think about the current interaction of spells like vacuum, telekinesis, or skewer and cliffs? In Warcraft 3 there was coding within the skills to prevent people getting repositioned on those cliffs, but in Dota 2 this has not been implemented yet. Some personal and biased feelings. People argue that this is easy to prevent via TP, force staff, blink, avoid getting near those places, or that this adds a new level of complexity or strategy. But every time I see a team fight near a Roshan pit being decided by placing their carry in the cliff, or a player being trapped in camp for three minutes, and he actually links to the exact replay that I'm watching right now, although it's a VOD, not, and I'm watching it through the Dota 2 client, in a competitive game. I just doubt that this is a good feature or well-designed mechanic for a game that strives to become the top eSport, and I just don't feel this has a place in proper competitive Dota. The fact that this was prevented in Dota by design, but it's not that way in Dota 2 seems really off. I'm sorry if I'm not making my points clear, English is not my native language, and I guess he just wanted me to talk about it. Thank you for your time, I really love your stream, I hope you can keep doing great stuff for the community. So my first qu uh, question rega is regarding like cliffing via... Um, whatever method possible usually uh like lasso or telekinesis but i'm gonna go ahead and talk about the most common methods and dark seer with vacuum this one's very easy dark seer's vacuum has like pretty pretty redonkulous size and you can like the radius is 550 so you just like target it right here and it'll suck everyone in at 550 radius onto the cliff and unless you break down these trees or have blink or force staff or some method of repositioning yourself maybe skewer with magnetar then you can't do anything about it um bat with lasso and flame break flame break is actually very very hard to do like i just recently played bat and although i'm no bat expert i still think it's very difficult to position because it has like a pretty long travel time and you have to position it just uh, like exactly right just so that they can n get knocked up here and knocked up here but you can lasso people too. Lasso is pretty easy to reposition, but it's an ultimate with a fairly long cooldown as opposed to vacuum, which is only 22 seconds cooldown. And then Magnetar, if you're a pro Magnetar, you can skewer people up here. For example, if Magnetar is right here, he can just click right here to skewer. And then since the thing that's right in front of him is uh, this cliff, then they will get trapped up there. And then also Rubik with Telekinesis. And Rubik is... Uh, radius is 325 so if you're anywhere like in this area you can just get telekinesis right up the hill um, and a couple of the the like cliffing heroes are in this game Rubik and Darkseer there is no Magnetar and there is no uh, Bat Rider this was taken this replay was taken um, one month ago like January 29th I believe in a uh, raid called DTO game uh, Fnatic vs. Night, no Tidehunter, and I believe that those heroes were most likely banned just because they were so popular. But you can't ban all of the imbalanced heroes. You can't ban Nyx, you can't ban Coddle, and uh, and Darkseer, and Rubik. You can't. You just can't ban all of them. Rubik's not really banned, but regardless, there's there's a reason why these heroes are very very popular and competitive, and like the the skill sets that they have, along with the ability to threaten people along the cliffs, is just ridiculous. Like a level one Rubik with boots first, as we've seen Kuroki get many times. He, if anyone tries to get the rune, he'll just dump on the cliff. And then you have, if you don't have a crow at that point in the game, you're just, you're, you're just absolutely screwed. And I'm gonna play this, actually. Um, so here, here he gets clipped, and he tries to TP, but then he gets interrupted by vacuum. Now he's stuck there for a good minute. And, like, what are you supposed to do about this? They don't have any way to get him down. They don't have any force apps right now. It's only 20 minutes in the game, and there's probably a lot of fighting before, and he doesn't have a blink dagger. So, like, what is he supposed to do? It's, it's just ridiculous that he, can't, that he can't do anything about it. And, like, this just, this just goes on for, like, an absurd amount of time. I'm just going to free camera right here, and you can see, like, the amount of stuff that goes on. And I do actually think that this mechanic is a little bit broken, because, like... A level 1 Rubik can just take somebody out of the lane completely and somebody has to farm 220 gold and you have to buy a TP scroll and even after that you missed like all this experience, all this gold and your team has to fight 4 on 5 or 4 while and it just like sets you back so much if that happens. So you pretty much just can't go up over here, You just this uh, area is just totally inaccessible if the enemy team has a Rubik at level 1 
and I, I, I don't, I really don't think that's fair. And it was taken out of Dota one. If you try and vacuum with them up there, I think they just get like shot back down. Uh, but you can trap multiple people up there too. And there's like a lot of clips of it's uh, just ridiculous stuff going on. You just like vacuum four people up here and drop a wall, and then what can they do? They just can't do anything. They their illusions are beating on them. If you kill them, they'll just spawn a new one, and it's just absolutely ridiculous. Um, other than like a couple mechanics of Dota 2 though, I'm pretty pleased with ha uh, most of the things that's been imported from Dota 1. I think Ice Rock has done a really good job about um, importing things and keeping things true to the true Dota feel, but I think that this is one of the areas where he's done wrong. Of course, that's my own personal opinion, but I mean, poor No-Tail, what is he going to do? He like he tries to TP again and just gets... They're, just, they're waiting for it, and, and they just keep him there. They don't even want to kill him. Like, they have to fight 45. If he dies, he can respawn and actually join the fight. But he just, like, bought a TP scroll, and they just interrupt it with Ice Path, and then what are you going to do now? Like, they have they even put another ward up there. Okay. Now now they actually want to kill him. But, like, do you see how long they kept him up there? And, like, I don't know. I just don't think that's fair. Another thing that I don't really think is fair in the game is bottle crowing. Uh, so cliffing and bottle crowing, those are really like the only two mechanics that I have like big issues with. I don't, I don't think they're fair and should be allowed. But since they are in the game, people, you, you just can't not use them just because they're in balance. It's like in a in a captain's mode game, are you not gonna pick Nick's assassin just because he's in balance? No, you just like ban it, and you have to pick it or ban it just because he's in balance. And just like telekinesis, you had just have to use it because it's in the game and. In competitive play, you pretty much just have to use whatever means to, uh, you know, win and with within reason, obviously, like not exploiting bugs or anything like that. And I don't think this is like technically considered a bug because it's been in the, it's been known for a very long time. And Ice Frog just either is not on his uh, like priority of stuff to fix, or he thinks it's fine. But either way, I don't I don't think it's fine. But I'm not the game developer, and Ice Frog will do what he wishes. But that's just my personal opinion on it. And Bottle Crowing is. I don't know, I, I just think it's dumb too. Like, if you, like, it's pretty much makes a lot of mid heroes obsolete, such as the Laser March, uh, Laser Rocket Tinker, and Lich Solo Mid. Lich Solo Mid actually used to be really popular, but what's a, like, 300 damage nuke gonna do when you can just bottle up, and then, like, one minute later you have another bottle, so you pretty much have, have like, 400 free HP times two, and then if you get a rune, like, you can't, you can't harass that, it's ridiculous. And Quap usually has a huge lead over most heroes middle, such as Magnus, but with Bottle Crowing, he can actually stay in the lane. And I just think that it's a little bit imbalanced, and we'd see, probably see more hero variety. They'd probably ban Quap, but like Magnus, I don't think would be as popular if you couldn't Bottle Crow in middle. Um, and one other small thing is like buyback. I'm not like completely satisfied with the buyback system. I do think it's a huge improvement what it was before. There used to be no cooldown on it, and it was just absurd. But it gets it gets uh, more expensive as the game goes on, as well as uh, it depends on what level you are. And I think it's reasonable as is. I maybe I'd like to see it like grow, like if it gets like past 40 minutes, grow like not in a linear fashion, maybe like an exponential fashion, so that it doesn't it costs like way more than 2,000 gold at the end just to make it prohibitively expensive. But uh, again, that's my personal opinion on it. But cliffing, I hope to see it taken out of the game. Um, but until then, we will probably see shenanigans like this NA being trapped there for a few lonely minutes in the future. So on to the second question. Second question is... How to best manage a reliable versus unreliable gold? What is it? How to get the most out of it? When to spend it? What gives reliable gold, etc. Pretty much everything about it. Huge fan and been following you since you were in JMC. Keep it up. Okay. Um, so I'm going to create a lobby real fast. And not captain's mode. And I will enable cheats. And while it is loading, I will pull up the Dota 2 wiki on gold. So unreliable gold is pretty much creep kills and neutrals. And everything else is pretty much reliable gold. Reliable gold is like hero kills, assist from hero kills, Roshan, global gold from towers, bounty hunter track gold, Hannah Midas gold. Uh, I'm not exactly sure about chicken bounty, but uh, I don't think that's 
that big of a concern since it doesn't happen very often. But anything you most most creep kills and neutrals is going to be reliable except Roshan. So what what is the difference between the two and why does it matter and how should you use this knowledge to better your Dota play? So when you start at the start, you have 603 unreliable gold and uh, if you kill a tower, you'll get reli 200 reliable gold if your team kills it. And if you get any hero kills, it'll also be added to reliable gold. And this is important. It's important to, to know the difference between unreliable and re reliable gold. When you die, it only takes away from your unreliable gold. So if for some reason you had 600 gold and it was all reliable and you died, you wouldn't lose any gold at all, which is awesome. And also, buying items uses up your unreliable gold first before using your reliable gold. And buyback uses reliable gold. That's pretty much just it. And the number that is shown right here, the 603 number, that's the sum of your reliable gold and unreliable gold. So how should you use this knowledge? Uh, pretty much if you run around killing people and you don't get any CS, you're only going to have reliable gold past the first 600 gold. So if you're like a bounty hunter and you just run around killing people all game and have like 10 CS, like 20 minutes in, and all you get is track gold and hero kill gold, you don't really need to worry about spending your gold before you die to maximize the gold um, that you get. But if you are someone else, like an alchemist with Goblin's Greed, and you just like farm the whole entire map with like max goblins greed and midas the only reliable gold that you are going to get are from towers and from and from uh midas and creeps so when you die you're going to take a huge hit on your gold amount so how do you how do you know you, you pretty much just like if, if you're like heavy farmer carry roll you're usually just going to have unreliable gold and if you're in the like ganker and support role most of your gold is going to be um reliable gold so how should supports use this information? Like if you're a support hero and you only have like 400 gold, 200 reliable, 200 unreliable, and you think you're probably going to die in this next team fight, you should probably spend it because 400 gold is pretty hard to come by as a support. So just like buy your observer wards and use up all your gold as is. And again, you can if you ever have a question as to how much of each you have, you just hover over your gold and it'll tell you. And it'll also tell you how much uh, it costs for your buyback. And this number increases as time goes on. And there's also like a few things you should know. You lose, I believe, 30 times your level for death. So if I wanted to save for buyback right now, I would need 1051 reliable gold or, um, let's see, I'm 25. 25 times 30 is 750. So I would need 750 plus 1053. I would need 1800 unreliable gold if I wanted to buy back. And it's important uh, because sometimes you get in these late game situations where you really need to have a buyback. And you don't know how much it costs so it's important to know this so that you don't use like you're not 50 gold short and the opponent team just takes your reaction like well fuck i didn't know how much i needed for buyback but now you know 30 times your level and it takes away from your unreliable gold when you die and buyback uses reliable gold so if you have 1060 reliable gold you're gonna go so just keep that in mind and uh pretty much how do i use this information i use this information like if I want to buy a sheep stick and I have like 4,000 gold, as soon as I get like 2,100 unreliable, I'll, I'll just spend all my unreliable gold. And I just pretty much hoard my reliable gold if I can. Sometimes you like you need the item. Like if you need a black king bar and you have like 4,000 gold all reliable, you need the black king bar in most situations. So you just spend all your reliable gold. But other than that, like if, like if I'm about to die in mid lane, I have like one, uh, like 400 gold from getting hero kill in first blood and then like another 200 gold maybe i'll just buy a circle it maybe i'll just buy a tp scroll to minimize the amount of guild loss and this is especially important if you don't get that much gold um so if you again if you're a support player or uh just someone who doesn't get that much gold or you're bad at farming you just got to make sure you spend it before you die because gold's not that easy to come by and similarly if you are a carry player like let's say you have your alchemist with 3,000 gold 2000 reliable 1000 unreliable you should just buy your ogre club if you're about to die and this is also where the quick buy comes in handy like you can use shift left click and then uh you can just buy according to how much you have right if you have uh 1000 unreliable you buy your ogre club if you have 1600 unreliable you buy your mithril hammer if you have somewhere in between you can buy your back clean bar to minimize the amount of gold that you lose and to maximize your reliable gold you don't want to pull away from your unreliable uh, from your reliable gold if you have to but in certain situations, um, you should.
again uh, this is just about like gold management and even though someone may farm a lot more than the other person if they die without spending their gold it's kind of like wasted farm right like you you farm the you farm the creeps and you got the last hits but the gold just goes to nowhere because you could have spent it as unreliable gold so just keep that in mind as you play and I think that it will conclude my second weekly mailbag episode. It's a little bit shorter, but I think these were two very important concepts, and I think, uh, yeah, that's about it. But again, if you have any questions, just mail me at mailbag at merlinidota.com. I wish I had like a video for the second part, but there's not too much besides the Dota 2 Wiki article. Just, I think it's dota2wiki.com slash wiki slash gold, or just Google Dota 2 unreliable or reliable gold if you're unsure about it. But if you have any other questions, mail me at mailbag at malinidota.com. I do this every week, every Tuesday at 7.30 CST. Thanks for joining me.